Hey everybody, I'm on a road trip today, or I guess I should say a, a day trip. I left Palm Springs early this morning before dark. It was actually raining. I have an old friend who I haven't seen in over 10 years now who contacted me recently and we decided to get together after all these years. The last time I saw her and her husband, they came to Palm Springs and that was over 10 years ago. And so I'm driving down to their house today and we're going to go have lunch today and just hang out and visit and catch up on the last 10 years. It's long overdue and I'm really looking forward to visiting them. And on the long drive here this morning, it took about an hour and a half or so to get here, I was thinking about other old friends and wondering what happened to some of them. And, and I thought about one in particular that I really, really regret that we weren't able to stay in touch, that we didn't stay in touch. And the reason we didn't stay in touch was completely because of me. I said something really, really stupid at the time. I think I was only, gosh, was I 18, 19 years old and still pretty immature and stupid and said a lot of dumb things like a lot of us do. But this was, I guess, this was really over the top and it just completely ended our friendship on that day. At that moment, when I said what I said, it ended our friendship and I never saw her again. My friend Barbara, who I really, really liked, I think she was probably the first lesbian I ever met. And I had just recently come out. So I think I came out when I was, well, I guess, was I 17, 17, 18? I guess I'm going to have to think about that and do a story about that. But I was like 17, 18 years old. And that's when I met her. And then we were friends for a year or two, a couple of years before I accidentally ended our friendship. So here's the story, and here's what, here's what happened. Her dad was a raging alcoholic, very, very abusive to her and her brother, and especially to her mother, and was just a very, very, not a very nice person. I think not only was he mentally and verbally and emotionally abusive, I think he, if I remember right, now this has been a long time ago, but I think he, gosh, this was like 1973, I think, was the last time I saw her. So what is that? Uh, so that was 50 years ago. Gosh, I can't believe it's been 50 years since uh, the last time I saw her. So sad. We could have had such a good friendship over these last 50 years. I mean, I really liked her a lot. I think she liked me. I mean, we had we had a really nice friendship. She was, she was great. She was a very talented artist, extremely talented artist. I don't know if she ever continued with art or what she did with her life. I would love to know. I've looked for her a couple of times online, but her name is very common. And so you know, there's a million people with her name on Facebook and online. So I just haven't been able to find her if she's even still alive or even still here in California. We met in college. My first year in college, I was a freshman. Well, obviously, it was my first year in college. And she was also a freshman. And we were friends, you know, like I say, for a couple of years. Yeah, I started college in 71. And, yeah, we our friendship ended in 1973. I just remember she loved Liza Minnelli. And I remember she was so excited when we went to... She wanted to go see Cabaret when it came out. And she had the album. She had all of Liza's albums and knew every song by heart. And... <laughs> I loved Cabaret too. We saw it a number of times in the in the movie theater. I don't know why, but we both ended up memorizing all the words to all the songs on the Cabaret album. And <laughs> I still can remember some of the some of the lyrics to some of those songs. Those were the days. But her father was very abusive and she'd always told me, she had told me so many times about all the abusive, horrible things he had done to her mother, especially, and her mother was just just beaten down, just even if it was just verbally and mentally and emotionally, and she was a mess. And I think she wanted a divorce. She wanted to leave him, but she couldn't for whatever reason. Everyone has different reasons for staying with abusive people. I mean, this was back in 1973, and it was probably even more difficult for women, especially to leave abusive men, even you know back then than than it is now. So anyway. I went to her house. Like, you know, now it's been so long. I can't remember exactly how it happened. It seems like I was with her. She had told me that her father had died. And I remember I was at her house, her mom's house with her. I think she still lived at home with her mom. And I had gone to the house and I was with her mom. And when she was talking about the fact that her dad had died, I said, thank God he's finally dead. Said something like that to that effect, you know, and her mom, her and her mom, they looked at me in just shock and horror that I would say such an awful, awful thing. And that I would be so callous. And I was just like, uh, 
I mean, I, I was like so surprised at the reaction because to me, she had told me a hundred times just what an awful person her dad was. So I'm thinking, thank God this awful, violent, alcoholic man is dead. But this, is, this was her father and this was the, the mother's, her mother's husband. And even though they probably didn't like the fact that he was an alcoholic, a raging alcoholic, and treating them awfully, they probably, I guess, still loved him, you know, at least at some level. And so, you know that old thing where, you know, you can say horrible things about the people you love, but if somebody else says something horrible about them, you get very, very defensive and angry. I, I know that's a thing. I mean, and I should have thought about that, but I just wasn't, I guess I wasn't thinking. I shouldn't have said anything. But I do have a way of saying all kinds of things I shouldn't say and putting my foot in my mouth. I've always kind of done that because I'm, you know, I'm very open and, you know, I never, ever want to say anything that's going to hurt anybody. I wouldn't have said anything to hurt them, knowingly to hurt them. I just, you know, seriously, I mean, I thought she hated her dad. I thought the mom hated the dad. So when I said, yeah, thank God he's dead, finally dead and out of your life, I guess I thought that's how they would both feel too. And, and they might have also, they might have actually felt that way. They might have been so relieved that he was no longer in their life to abuse, abuse them. But it's one thing for them to feel that way. And maybe they wouldn't even say it, or maybe it took, you know, they were in the grieving process probably, so they weren't going to, maybe they weren't feeling that way. Maybe all of a sudden they were thinking about all the loving things and all the good times and, you know, the fact that he was actually the husband and, and Barbara's dad. And so, yeah, I don't know. But whatever it was that I said, I mean, I didn't mean it in a, you know, a mean way or a bad way or an insulting way or to hurt them, but it sure did. I don't know. Maybe there was some other reason why she didn't want to be friends. I don't know after that, but I never heard from her again. And we were inseparable. We were super close, but maybe her mom just said, you got to get rid of this awful, awful person. You don't need another awful person in your life. Somebody's going to say awful things about the dead, you know? So yeah, I always regretted that I said that. And, and I think ever since I said that, I think I've always been, I think I've been much more careful now about the things I say, even if they're true, even if they're things you would think people are thinking or feeling or would want to say themselves, it's best just to keep your mouth shut as much as possible. And if they want to say things like that, if they, you know, if they wanted to say, thank God he's dead, that's one thing. But for me, who wasn't a family member to say it, I guess that just wasn't appropriate. So... What do you think about that? I mean, have you ever done anything like that? Have you ever said anything to a friend that, or a family member or whatever that just completely on the spot ended your relationship and was somebody that you really liked and you weren't intending to hurt anybody or ruin the relationship? Or is it just me? Or am I the only one who's ever done that? So I don't know. But again, you know, at least hopefully lesson learned. Hopefully I will never do that again. I don't think I've ever, ever done that, anything like that since. And and I remember I was just as shocked as they were. They were shocked that I would say something so awful. And I was shocked at the reaction because I thought they were going to agree with me. <laughs> I mean, I was totally, I guess I was just oblivious, you know, to how they really felt or just to the situation, you know. I mean, we weren't at the funeral. We weren't at, you know, a funeral service or memorial or anything. We were just at their house, but he had just died like a couple of days earlier, I think. So anyway, so that's my story about my friend Barbara who ended our friendship because of a dumb thing, a really dumb, stupid thing that I said. Over the years, I've said a lot of dumb, stupid things, and I think most of us do, especially when we're younger, but not everyone stops saying dumb, stupid things when they're young. Some people do it until the day they die. Hopefully, I'm not saying too many dumb, stupid things these days. I don't know. Maybe I am, and I'm just not aware of it. I hope not. But if you guys have said any dumb, stupid things that you want to share with us in the comments, please do. And if you can relate to this story, let me know. So thanks for joining me today, and I'll hope to see you on the next video.